after the first round. So who is it going to be? Let's go. What is going on, everybody? I'm Max Kellerman. Welcome to this Just In, a fast hour around the world of sports and how I and some of my friends who will be with me shortly see it. The NFL playoffs are set. We'll get into all the matchups and we start with the NFC. There was a lot on the line in the conference yesterday. Eagles locked up a top seed and the first round by with a win over my beloved New York football Giants. Phillies 14th win of the season set a new franchise single season record. That locked in what turns out to be the Monday night game between the Cowboys and Bucks. Dak versus Tom Brady. Tom Brady versus Micah Parsons and that pass rush. First playoff meeting between these two franchises since 1982. Packers were in a win and get in situation, but they're out. They lost last night, and now the Seahawks have the final spot in the NFC. So, Aaron, what are the plans for next season? At some point, the carousel comes to a stop, and it's time to get off. And I think you, you kind of know when that is. Um, and that's what needs to be contemplated. You know, is it time? Uh, also, what's the organization doing? You know, this, it's part of it as well. I, mean, I feel good about what I've accomplished in this league and um, wouldn't have any regrets walking away. Uh, but I got to see what it feels like once I get away from this. And here are my friends. Heisman Trophy winner Robert Griffin III joins me from SoFi Stadium, the site of tonight's college football national championship game. And NFL senior writer Jeremy Fowler is also with us. Um, all right. Robert, let me tell you what I see before I even get into the specifics. I see two bad things for, for Aaron Rodgers. Number one, he's not in the playoffs. But number two, the guy who jumped over to his conference and beat him when they went head-to-head -head in, the, in the NFC title game at 100 years old with no offensive line, et cetera, I know they have a losing record, whatever. He's in. That's the bottom line. He's in. And Aaron Rodgers in a win and get in couldn't get it done how much of the blame for the Packers failure to make the playoffs falls on Rodgers well Max it's not a hundred percent but as we all know the old age the age-old adage of when quarterbacks or teams win the quarterback gets all of the praise and when they lose they get too much of the blame so in this case I do think that Aaron does shoulder some of the blame because the uncertainty in the offseason really set the Packers up for this type of season Devontae Adams isn't in Green Bay because Aaron Rodgers wasn't sure about whether he was coming back or not. Rodgers didn't go in the offseason program and get the work in with the young receivers, and the team needed him to be there. And also, their defense underperformed massively. So everything this year for the Packers was extremely hard, but when they needed Aaron Rodgers the most at the end of that game, he came up just a little bit short against a team in the Detroit Lions that he said he owns, that he didn't own them last night. Let me say something. Green Bay was diff attempting a difficult thing. I think the Golden State Warriors are doing the same thing in the NBA. They're trying to thread the needle. If you have a guy like Aaron Rodgers or Steph Curry, right, you say, you know what? We can draft some young talent, replace some older guys, get young, keep this thing going, not miss a beat, make the playoffs, make a run, and also prepare for the future at the same time. You are counting on your leader to overcome deficiencies so that the young guys can catch fire, get into that rhythm, get that experience on the way and he was unable to do what they needed him to do Jeremy what is next for Aaron Rodgers well Max the expectation I've heard after asking around is that Aaron Rodgers will take a bit of a cool down period here he'll probably disappear for a week or two you know check things out and see how he's feeling and, and retirement appears to be on the option you heard him there uh, in the sound it was really for a couple years he's been considering that and so the Packers do have strong interest in bringing Aaron Rodgers back into the fold in 2023 not a lot of buzz league-wide about any sort of trade happening he, his contract would be tough to trade he's got a 58 million dollar option bonus due to be exercised between March 17th and week one so the Packers can wait on that see if there's another team who wants to take that on and they could restructure it save some cap space but right now that's not really on the table it's more about is he going to walk away or come back and be a part of this team next year Robert, you think he's going to pull a Dave Chappelle? Is he going to walk away from 50 million? <laughs> only Chappelle, only Chappelle has done it. All right. Do you think he like becomes it. the second guy to do it, Robert? Max, you're right. Only Dave Chappelle is the one that was able to do that. <laughs> I just, when you watched him in that post-game press conference, I saw a man who was a little bit broken inside because of the just how stressful this season has been for him. 
I don't think that he was ready to make an emotional decision there at the end of the game, yeah. but he was being very reflective and almost made it seem like the carousel stopped maybe made, you know, right around the middle of the season. They dug themselves into a 4-8 hole, clawed their way back, and then he lost a game to a team, as I said before, that he has been repeatedly saying that he has owned in the Detroit Lions. I don't think that's the last game that we see from Aaron Rodgers because I don't think he wants that to be his lasting image as an NFL quarterback is losing to a team that, as I said, he has continually owned over the course of his career. And there is the small matter of the 58 million. All right, now time for great, greater and greatest of this week and all the incredible moments for DeMar Hamlin from the league-wide tributes to Naheem Hines taking <laughs> it couldn't even be real, right? The opening kickoff for the Bills for a touchdown. RG3, that, and by the way, I love it that, that DeMar Hamlin tweets about the, that play, right? What an incredible day all around the NFL yesterday. Yeah, it was an incredible day just to see the unity, you know, to take a negative and, and really even more than a negative with a life threatening situation that DeMar Hamlin is still currently in and turning it into a positive. I just appreciate him and say thank you to him for speaking through his faith. He's united so many different people, and we saw those demonstrations on the field. With those return touchdowns, it was like a storybook, you know, beginning really for the Bills playoff run. Just incredible all around. Indeed. A national champion will be crowned tonight, guys. Cinderella's TCU, right? Trying to spoil Georgia's quest of back-to-back -back national titles. The Frogs have never beaten the Dogs in their four previous meetings, and TCU will have a huge mountain to climb against the defending champs. Georgia coming into the game a hefty 13-point favorite. That would be the largest spread in a national title game over the past 25 years. However, the two biggest favorites both lost the big game. Once again, Robert is at SoFi Stadium, the site of tonight's national championship game. Uh, simply put, RG3, what needs to happen tonight for TCU to shock the world? Well, I think for TCU, it, it wouldn't be a shock to them. Everyone else is calling them an underdog. Everyone else is thinking that they're just happy to be here. But after talking to their coaches and their players, they are not just happy to be here. They believe they belong here. They earned their way here. And for them, they just have to play the style of football that they have been all year long. Whether it's a comeback is needed or they go out big and have to maintain a lead. Hitting those 50-50 shots down the football field and winning on first and second down will be huge for TCU today. If they can get that first first down, it will allow them to tire out Georgia's defensive line and All-American Jalen Carter won't be able to rush the passer as effectively. That's exactly what Ohio State did in the semifinal against Georgia, and that's what TCU needs to do. They might not have their star running back, Kendra Miller, but uh, Amari DiMercato did go out and run for 150 yards, and they were able to own the line of scrimmage against Michigan, a formidable front on both sides of the ball. TCU needs more of that, and of course, the house of Duggan has to make everybody feel like he's teaching them how to Dougie. All right, so let's say that this goes according to what the odd, odds makers believe. Georgia gets the job done tonight. Robert, have the Bulldogs surpassed Bama if they win as the top program in the nation? Max, I would say historically no, but for right now, yes, Georgia would become the new kings of college football. Kirby Smart has literally built a recruiting powerhouse there at Georgia. They finished in the top 10 six years in a row. And for them to repeat as champs, that's significant because the last team to do it was the 2011-2012 Alabama Crimson Tide. And Kirby Smart was the defensive coordinator on those teams. Nick Saban's only been a repeat champion one time in his entire career. So for Kirby Smart to match him at this point, would be phenomenal, and they'd be one of only four teams to ever repeat as champs without a split championship. Georgia is on the precipice of something monumental, and that's a lot of pressure for Stetson Bennett and the mailman, or should I say Stetson Bennett, the mailman, to come out and deliver tonight. And the difference now, I think, with Kirby Smart, at least, and, and Nick Saban, is that when Dabo was neck and neck with Saban for about four or five years there, it wasn't like, oh, the NIL and the portal was different. We are now existing in a new world, and it's hard to ignore that in this new world, if Georgia wins, they're on top. It just feels different. 
Thank you, Robert. Tonight, TCU takes on Georgia in the college football playoff national championship game.